Hey, in this quick video, I want to compare the different ways you can make a high quality depth pass to use in your animations mixed with a displacement map applied to a 2D image to create this fake depth effect that you can then combine with other digital animation techniques or AI animation techniques to make your scenes feel more rich, more alive, with more depth. In the past, I've touched on using Midas via Hugging Face, which was a 2.1 version. And in this video, I'm gonna show how you can use the newer 3.1 version via a Google Colab and take you through those steps. And it's not as daunting as it first looks. Um, and then I'm also going to use the new beta version of Photoshop and their neural filter, which has a depth pass. And we'll compare the output from Midas 3.1 and Photoshop beta with their neural filter depth pass and look at the differences and decide which one's best. And then I'll take you through the steps of very quickly linking up a camera with a displacement map in After Effects to create this fake 3D depth effect, similar to what I have in previous videos, but I'll just quickly run through it and try and be a bit more concise. Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna hop straight into Google Colab and we're gonna run the Midas version 3.1. I'll include a link to this in the video description below. If you're not familiar with Google Colab, it's a way to access high-end GPUs and people are sharing different bits of code run on Python and you can access it often for free. Sometimes you need to pay extra to be able to use a certain GPU storage and things like that. Yeah, it's very popular in the world of data science and also in AI image generation. So it's something worth getting your head around. I'm fairly new to it and just trying to find my feet myself. But um, yeah, this Midas one's nice and quick and easy and a good entry point for using Google Colab. So once on this page and logged into your Google account, and you'll be presented with these steps. You can see step one, step two, step three. Up here, if you're not already connected, you press connect and it will initialize and connect. And then you're up and running. And first of all, we need to start the process. So if you move the mouse over here where it says MKDIR depth, we can press the play button, get a little warning and press run anyway. And this is gonna set up Midas version 3.1 ready for us to add our images and run Midas to create that depth pass. Okay, and that took around 14 seconds to get set up. You can see it says done at the bottom of this big page of looming scary code. So we can move straight down to step two, upload images into the input folder. So up on the left, if you move over to the folders, press here and then drop down Midas and there is an input folder. You can then click the three dots and choose upload and select one or multiple images that you want to process through Midas 3.1. And I've got this image to hand of a sort of dystopian city being overgrown by trees and foliage. Press OK. And we can see that image is now in the input folder. We can now move down to step three where it says run Midas and we're going to press the play button. OK, and that now says finished. Um, and that took around 20 seconds to complete. You then have this alternative option to run a second pass where it will try and make higher accuracy um, and it can, in some instances, produce a better result. Um, I'm actually finding at the moment, most of the time, I'm happy with the result without this step and actually prefer it. And then down at step four, you can choose zip results. Instead of that, you can go over to the depth pass folder on the left here, drop that down. We can click on that and download. Alternatively, if you've got multiple files, you can run the zip file and then close the Midas folder, reopen it, and you will then have a results.zip file that you can download as well. And that's it, we can now check out the results. So here we have the original image we uploaded to Midas 3.1. This is the initial output that we have from Midas 2.1 run via Hugging Face. Um, as you can see, it's quite a blurry image, but there is the obvious depth to the scene. And then this is the version from Midas 3.1 with far more detail, much more clarity around the branches of this tree. And there's just generally jump back and forth between those two. You can see there's much more definition around this brick wall up here and just generally more information to play around with with our displacement map effect and make use of that depth. And now I'm going to try out the same process but using the new depth pass effect built into Photoshop and it's currently available in the beta version. So I've loaded our image up into Photoshop and this is the beta version release 25 and I'm going to go ahead and press filter, neural filters and down here we have the depth blur which if it isn't available you just need to press the little cloud icon and then switch it on. It processes the image and you can play around and move the focus, focal range and things like that. Or the bit we're after, you can turn on output depth map only and it will create this image for us. You can press OK. And then I'm just going to invert that image so it matches the way that Midas creates it to help when we're comparing them. 
either way, if it's inverted or not, it actually will work perfectly well within After Effects. But let's go Image, Adjustments, Invert, or you can press Command-I or Control-I. And there we go, we have our image that we can save out. And the process is much quicker and easier than going through the Midas approach. But if you don't have Photoshop available, then I think Midas is still a very valid option. And here we can compare those two outputs with the Midas 3.1 output on the left and the Photoshop beta output on the right. Um, and I think there's lots of pluses for both of those. On the one on the left here, we get more clarity over the branch coming out from the tree. I think that works well. Whereas in Photoshop, it's got very nice crisp definition around the edges of the leaves on the tree. Plus it's got more clarity around some of these smaller branches and slightly more detail around the edge of the tree here. I think the smoothing of the gradient going from light through the different shades of dark gray to black here is much smoother on the Midas output compared to the Photoshop one. Whereas Photoshop's got a little bit confused here and it's putting some of the branches here at the same depth as a background scene just behind it. So I think there is a bit of more clarity around the actual depth perception with Midas, but then more clarity with Photoshop around defining the edges of some of the actual items within the scene. On this brick wall here, I imagine, although there's not much information there, you do get the sense that there would have been a plinth all the way across here, including where my mouse is. Um, and I think that's been done very well on the Midas one, and it's done a good job of guessing that there would have been a brick wall all the way across here. Whereas on the Photoshop image, it has curved up where we've got that darker bit of shadow here. Photoshop's assume that is actually further away, whereas Midas has interestingly figured out that might actually be part of the structure and put it at the same depth. So I think in the end, it's actually annoyingly a draw and you're gonna have to pick and choose depending on your scene, maybe try out both approaches and dropping them into your scene and seeing which one works best. And it's gonna be kind of scene specific depending on what you're hoping to do with that depth pass and how much movement you're gonna be making with that displacement map and whether having a crisp edge is more important than a more accurate sense of depth. And whilst I can't believe I'm actually making such an annoyingly long video, we're now at seven minutes talking about depth maps. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you prefer the Midas or the Photoshop output and why? And if you're interested in things like this and using AI tools to create imagery and animation, please leave any comments, subscribe and all of that jazz. And I'm gonna quickly run through and show how you can link all this up in Adobe After Effects to make use of that depth pass with the image to create that displacement 3D effect. Okay, so very quickly in Adobe After Effects, I've brought in our original image and those two different depth maps. And I'm gonna go ahead and press new composition and we're gonna make one at 1920 by 1080. So a HD composition, and we're gonna leave the frame rate as it is. Press okay, so grab the original image and that Midas depth map, drag those down to our composition. Press S and scale them up just to fill our HD comp. And then with that original image selected, I'm going to right click, choose effect, distort, displacement map, and then up in the effects menu, I'm gonna press displacement map layer and select our depth map, that Midas depth map. And then I'm gonna change the type of displacement from color to luminance, change red to luminance and green to luminance. We can then adjust the horizontal and vertical displacement by adjusting these parameters here. And we get this cool 3D depth effect, which is pretty cool. And it's doing a pretty nice job. And there's a little bit of distortion. If you push too far, you'll see we get some strange effects in certain areas of the image so you don't want to go too far with it but it's very handy for creating this sense of depth just going to revert those to zero and you could end it there and you could keyframe those parameters for your scene but i like to link it to a camera so i'm going to go ahead and right click press new camera we're going to make a one node camera press ok and then we're going to drop down the transform properties until we can see position you could also just press p we're then going to open up the effects parameters for our original image where it says displacement map. And we're going to pick whip our horizontal displacement to the position of our camera on the X. Drop down the button here so you can see the expression that's been applied. And we're going to write minus 960, which is the amount on the X value of the camera. And that will change the horizontal displacement value to zero. And then for our maximum vertical displacement, we're going to pick whip the Y value of our camera and do the same again. Go to the end of the code here and type minus 540, which is the amount on the Y axis of our camera's position and click off that. And they will both revert to zero. Drag that back down. And now in this scene, we can press the C button to cycle through the camera properties. We want the pan button. We can now pan left and right with the camera and move around our scene. I'll include a link to one of my other videos here, just so you can see how you can go a bit further and enable the ability to be able to zoom into the scene as well as be able to pan left and right. I'm just gonna set a couple of quick keyframes 
and then we have some camera keyframes moving around our scene. We can then click on that Midas layer, go back to our project panel, click on the Photoshop depth map, hold down the Alt or Option button, click and drag that on top of our Midas layer, and it'll swap out the depth pass for the Photoshop one, and we can see if we prefer the results of those. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Hopefully it's been helpful and given some ideas about how you can create higher quality depth maps using Midas 3.1 or the Photoshop approach um, and quickly shown how you can link things together and make use of a displacement map and a camera in Adobe After Effects. Um, if you haven't already, please press subscribe, like, leave a comment, all that sort of stuff. And of course, head over to AIAnimation.com to see what we're doing there. All right, thanks very much. Cheers.